Welcome to another Water Trek 360. Today we're going to be looking at another underwater housing for your smartphone. That is the Shellbox Gen 2. It goes by many names and you've probably seen it online. It's the Marmot, the Yogre, the New Sea, Shoppy, but they're all basically the same. The Shellbox Gen 2 is a plastic two-piece housing that snaps horizontally over your phone, protecting it while you're in the water. We're going to be comparing that against the Dive Volk Sea Touch 4 Max underwater housing. Anybody who's seen my channel, you've seen I've done a couple of reviews with the Dive Volk. Uh, I will leave links in the description where you can look at the nuances in more detail in those videos as well. Now, full disclosure, I am not paid by either one of these companies. These opinions are my own as a longtime rec diver and videographer. Uh, I look for ease of use, I look for cost, I look for durability, accessories, etc. Things to make my life diving easier. So, that said, let's have a look. For any of you who have seen my previous videos on the Dive Volk Seat Touch, uh, it's pretty easy to use. They come with an internal sleeve for this one here. It happens to be an iPhone 13 Pro. You align the camera with the hole in the back. It snaps pretty easily into this little sleeve. It then goes into the side housing. There is a dry O-ring that fits on the side. When you place the phone in, you have to make sure the back of the phone goes up against the membrane. You can then cinch up both screws. You'll see I only do one here, but that's for the video. And then you are effectively ready to go. The touch membrane is now for you to use. You don't get facial recognition, but I will enter my password here. 1001, 1002, and then you're good to go. Tap on phone or camera, and then you can swipe to the right or left, changing your modes just as if you were topside. On, off, you start, you stop. Again, I do mostly video, so it's pretty easy. If you want to go back and change your settings, that's pretty easy to do as well. You can do that on the fly, whether you're above or below water. Pretty simple. Check out the link in the description on my video on preferred underwater settings for the iPhone 13. The first thing you'll notice with the shell box is that the housing has these six clamps, external clips that you need to open. They provide you with this small white key-shaped tool to pop each one of these clips off. They're on pretty tight and they're kind of a pain if you try to do it with just your fingers. It's a bit challenging. Uh, any flathead screwdriver will basically do the same trick, but you need to pop all six in order to open up the back of the housing. Once you get it turned over, sometimes they pop shut, but uh, they're pretty easy to open. Next, you'll use the clip to remove the back of the housing from the top of the housing. When you do this, though, please make note of the fact that the housing has specific smooth lines for the bottom and two little notches for the top. You have to align those properly when you put it back on so you don't get water leakage. The next thing you look at and you'll notice are these little orange tabs in there. One of the tabs on the bottom aligns to the up down volume button so that when you use that little trigger feature it turns it on and off. The other thing you notice that there's these locking mechanisms, these orange slider bars. When the phone goes in it has to go into the forward of the housing and in left for an iPhone. So you pull that bottom bracket down. Once it's down, then you have to lock it in place. Once that's locked in place, you leave the one on the right free sliding so that it holds the phone in place. You take the iPhone, as I mentioned, it's got to go to the top and left of the casing for the iPhone. You pull the slider bar, it cinches up, and then you push the phone forward. There's another clamp at the bottom of the phone that you use to slide forward to hold it in place. The clips that you see at the top are the ones used for the camera being turned on and off. Now, I use those little adjusters in there. It just helps to cinch it up closer to the phone, make it a little tighter so it doesn't shift inside the housing. Now, when you depress the trigger button, it will hit the little orange trigger down on the bottom and hit the up or down volume button and turn the camera on or off. So if you go into the phone and you go to your camera settings there, you'll see that you're in the, in this case, video mode, and you press the button, goes on, 
I also suggest you find the up or down button that works best for you before putting the back of the housing on so you don't have an issue when you dive. I found that the bottom volume down button worked better for me. Once your phone is set, then you're ready to attach the back, ensuring that you put the smooth side of the back plate to the bottom and the one with the two ridges to the top. I then generally cinch the bottom clip first, then the top, and then kind of like the old lug nuts on a, on a car, I alternate between right and left, top and bottom to get a more stable seal from the back of the housing to the front of the housing. Once uh, the clips are done, you're ready to go. Phone is good for use and time to go play. So, the good. The nice part about both these housings is they don't require a battery, they don't require any kind of app or software updates. The shell box is rather inexpensive. It's only 50 bucks versus 200 minimally that you're going to be spending on the dive volk. They're both simple in concept and easy to use. Both have touch membrane. I do like the start stop button for the shell box. Maybe that's something dive volk may want to look into. Uh, the key here for these is settings. You know, make sure that you've got auto lock set to never. You've got raise to wake and assistive touch on. Uh, effectively, your phone is on and stays on in the camera mode uh, prior and during your dive. They're both pretty easy to clean. The dive bulk, since it has no moving parts, if you actually do get leakage inside, you can soak the housing with the cavity doors open uh, and then let it dry an extra long time. The shell box is positively buoyant, so I had to put a two pound weight on it in order to let it sit and soak for 20 minutes or so in warm water. It's interesting, there are no electronics inside. Uh, I guess the spring-loaded mechanism or whatever components they have inside, they don't want you to get wet, but that's their suggestion. You soak it sealed. The bat. For both of these housings, gloves are challenging. I have used gloves with Dive Volk with some success, but I prefer not to as they can scratch the all-important membrane. I was not really able to get Shellbox to respond at all with gloves. The obvious exception to that is the camera on-off button at the top of the housing, then it worked fine. The shell box instructions are pretty poor for the initial setup. The internal retaining clips were challenging for first time setup and use. The six external housing clips are also a bit of a pain to open and close. And now effectively you have six points of failure rather than just the two screws clamping the dry o-ring. Shell box doesn't say whether the o-ring is dry or not. I have to assume that it's a dry o-ring. Shellbox does not come with any accessories. It has the little key and a lanyard, but no red filter. I tried to jury-rig one from a different housing, but that didn't work too well. I was able to get the housing onto a two-handle tray, but I will need to find one that fits better because I had some challenges there as well. And now the ugly. Durability for me is key as a wreck diver. The dive volk is metal with a glass face and has a very sturdy construction. The shell box is a light plastic. Uh, the front window is either plexiglass or plastic. I scratch mine already with casual use. The shell box's rear membrane is kind of flimsy. It's a hard, thin plastic which doesn't have the tolerance feel that the dive volk has. Uh, even though the dive volk is more malleable, the construction seems to be just a little bit better. With the shell box, you hear this hollow drum sound, which doesn't instill a lot of confidence in me. If you've seen any of my other videos about the dive volk, the membrane was always my biggest concern. This is an even bigger concern for me with the shell box. The dive volk does have a membrane protector for use topside. The shell box does not. Both manufacturers strongly suggest doing a tissue test before using it to make sure there are no leakage. Uh, dive Volk does provide you with a sleeve that you use to protect it during storage. You can put that into the housing when you use it underwater. 
Shellbox does not have that. I would never take either one of these housings underwater below three or four feet without something in it. Otherwise, you will compromise the membrane and possibly concave it, ruining the housing. While I was able to get the touch membrane to work topside, in my controlled underwater test with the shell box, I had real challenges getting it to work at all. It only works successfully a handful of times. So for me, this is a set it and forget it type of scenario. You put your phone into mode prior to dive, and then you just use the buttons to turn the camera on and off. That's it. For the dive volt, I added some additional layers within the sleeve to raise the phone up against the membrane to improve the touch capability. With the shell box, one of my concerns is that the gap between the membrane and the phone itself is like an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And with water pressure, that really pushes on the membrane and to me compromises its durability. Deeper depths will surely stretch the membrane, pushing it into the phone, uh, creating increased fatigue. While the dive oak is rated to 180 feet, uh, it was a major disappointment that the shell box is only good to 45 slash 50 feet. The little clip that you see here would not have been possible with the shell box as this wreck was at 75 feet. So what's my conclusion? Well, if you're a snorkeler, freshwater, shallow water diver, never going deeper than 30 feet, I would never test the tolerances on this to 50 feet, then this is a cheap, low-cost option to protect your phone while you're doing those types of activities, and I'll give it a three, three and a half type rating. I would give the Dive Volk a four, four and a half rating because of its durability and its accessories, etc doing the same type of activities. If you are doing deeper water diving though, I would give the shell box a one. The fact that it doesn't go below 50 feet and I have concerns about its tolerances on the back membrane anyway, makes it a deal breaker for me. That said, full disclosure, when I purchased it, I thought it said 50 meters, not 50 feet, so my bad. The Dive Volk doing the same type of activity though, I give it a four. I still have challenges and concerns with the membrane, but it does what I want it to do at depth. It has the accessories and it has the durability that I need. Do check out some of my other videos on the Dive Volk C-Touch 4 Max, as well as the iPhone 13 Pro and some of the settings. I'll look at some of our wreck dives and some of the other information we have out on marine life, etc. And as always, until the next time, go explore, get wet. Mm -hmm.